All right, hey guys, this is a requested video on uh, another way to actually change the sensitivity on your Guitar Hero custom interface, like this one here. Um, what I've actually done is made it a separate expander box. Using six quarter inch jacks, I've actually used five for the pads and one more for a kick pad, just in case. And uh, the trick I used was using potentiometers now I've got six on one side here and this is the other source here this is the in source and this is the out source which goes to the drums Guitar Hero Brain is uh, plugged in through here and let me open it these are the potentiometers on the top here they can turn a full 300 degrees but what I've done was actually on the first two terminals here you'll notice that each one is color coded to which pad they're coordinated to and I've actually made the first two, the color is represented as positive and black as negative of course just like my other ones so on the first two terminals as you can see I've actually plugged them in as positive and the black is negative on the last one then after all these are uh, actually wound up tight inside close this here and as you flip this, this will be going directly to the, uh, your drum set on each pads and cymbals. And on here, these are already preset at zero. I have six up here. And you just slowly actually turn them to whatever destination you really want them. Now, this is mainly recommended for those that have had problems with the sensitivity. Being that a lot of people still want to use cymbals, but have had issues with crosstalk and ghost notes going on especially with the built-in vibration from the frame and of course the problem could be from the drum brain itself but these can be turned a full 300 degrees to any desired uh, sensitivity that you actually want and I found out now I know that the official G5 might use something similar to these 100k pots but I found out from someone else that they use something like this now let me pop up this picture in picture. Okay, what I have here is an A9 Customs Rapid Fire Controller. As you can see here. This was the fit this is the one I've actually featured in the test. Now you see it's got this this flathead screw on the bottom with these switches to turn the rapid fire on for both sides on both triggers. Now when I turn this actually on, this is actually preset. This pot sensor that's inside is actually set to zero. You can see I'm holding the trigger, but it's not doing anything, all right? Turn the rapid fire off, it fires. All right, let me turn it back on. I'm gonna reload. I'm gonna hold it down. I'm gonna hold down the trigger. I'm gonna show you, this is how I got the idea. Now you just slowly set it from zero, and here's what's happening is that there's so much resistance when it's set at zero, it can't send the pulse, that signal, over to where it actually receives it, and it causes the gun to fire. Now, as I slowly turn it, the resistance dumbs down and the pulses becomes more vibrant and aware, and it causes the gun to fire. Now, whoops, sorry. Now, these are actually linear pots, and I would run it, uh, really recommend 100k linear. What that means is that it goes a direct straight line of passage from 0 to 300. Meanwhile, all right, if you have any more questions, this is just a partial uh, demonstration of what we're doing. I'll, uh, I'll eventually put a Guitar Hero demonstration probably on a custom song, as I said before. Uh, any other requests, just let me know.